Hey everybody, who's ready to do math? Okay, I get it, I'm the only weird one here. Most people ain't math, I guess. <laughs> so, for this video I want to be talking about finding the sum of a quadratic sequence. I'm gonna, full disclaimer, I have no idea if this is the best way to do this. I'm making this video because I YouTubed how to do this and I could not find any videos on this. If you know a better way, please put a link in the comments. To start with, I want to go over what a quadratic sequence is and I want to go over what a Pascal triangle is because those are both important. If you know what those are, you can go to the signatures above. So I'm going to put up a quadratic sequence, which the most obvious one is 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, etc. y equals x squared. Now what makes this quadratic is the first differences are 3, 5, 7, 9, and the second differences are 2, 2, and 2, and these are all constant. For a constant graph, so for a y equals 2x you have 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, and all of these differences are constant. For a quadratic, all of the differences of differences must be constant. Okay, now here's another sequence, and at first glance this does not look like it's quadratic at all. However, we can prove that this is, because 7 minus 3 is 4, 14 minus 7 is 7, 24 minus 14 is 10, then, 7 minus 4 is 3, and 10 minus 7 is also 3. These two are equal, so it must be a quadratic equation. Next, we want to go over what a Pascal's triangle is. A Pascal's triangle is where you have sets of 1's going across. The rest of the numbers are found by adding the diagonals on top together. So, 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 plus 2 is 3, 3 plus 3 is 6, for instance x plus y to the 0, this equals 1. x plus y to the first gives you 1x plus 1y. x plus y squared gives you 1x plus 2xy, 1x squared plus 2xy plus 1y squared. And then x plus y cubed gives you 1x cubed plus 3x squared y plus 3y squared x plus 1y squared y cubed, and so forth. It's also important to note for this that there are different types of series in here. This one is constant, this is linear because the differences are the same, and this one's quadratic as we're talking about where it's 2, 3, 4, 15, and then we have difference of differences 1, 1, and 1, so we know it's quadratic then. The one that we're concerned about for this proof is this one, and there's a long proof for this, but the way you find the sum is n times n plus 1 times n plus 2 over 6. I'll put a link to a proof in the description below in case you're wondering, but we'll save that for a different video. When finding sums, I like breaking things up into smaller numbers that are repeating, and so for this we're going to take the easiest quadratic function and we're going to find the differences and the differences of the differences. Alright, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write each term in terms of these three numbers, because those are the only three numbers we need to use for this. So the first one is just 1. Easy. The second is 1 plus 3 is 4. The next, we're obviously going to need 1 plus 3 to get to 4. So when we get to 4, we're then going to add 5 to get to 9. But 5 can be written as 3 plus 2. 3 plus 2. Then, we can write 1 plus 3 plus 3 plus 2, which is this, plus 7, which is 3 plus 2 plus 2, 16. 3 plus 2 plus 2. And then we'll just do one more, which is 1 plus 3 plus 3 plus 2. When we get to this point, we now need to add 9, which is the same as 3 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2. 3 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2. And from here, it just keeps on continuing. My favorite thing about math has to be that everything follows a pattern, and this is no exception, so I thought I would chart this out. And we have our first number, which is just 1, so now we're just going to count the amount of times that it appears. So in the first term, there's only one 1. Second, there's 1, 1. Third, there's 1, 1. Fourth, there's 1, 1. Fifth, there's 1, 1. There are zero threes in the first term. There's one three in the second term. Two threes in the third term. 
three threes in the third term, and one, two, three, four threes, fifth term. Here's where you need to start seeing the pattern. There are zero twos and zero twos in the first two. There's one in the third, one, two, three, the fourth, and one, two, three, four, five, six. Four, five, six in the fifth term. Now, we're going to see that this is pretty much the Pascal's Triangle. We have all ones. We have one, two, three, four. We have one, three, six. Okay, so now how are we going to find the sum of this? Well, it seems easy because we're going to multiply one by one, two, three, four, five. And multiply three by one, three, six, ten. And multiply two by one, four, ten. But we're looking to write this in terms of an equation. So if we can see that in the second term there are two ones, in the third term there are three ones, fourth term four ones, and fifth term five ones. So this is just going to be n times f. Because if we start on a bigger number than one, then you're going to have to multiply by how many terms it appears in. Next is going to be this. And if you know anything about the sums of linear equations, you can find it by n times n plus 1 over 2. This is the sum of an equation. Problem is we have to plug in n minus 1 in this equation because we need, we're need we starting to the right one. So at 2 we're really starting at n minus 1 is 1 because this is the first, second, third, and fourth even though they appear in different terms in this particular series. So by plugging in n minus 1, the ones cross out and we get an n minus 1 here times d. We can easily prove this, because in the first term there's 1 minus 1 is 0, in the second term there's 2 minus 1 is 2, 2 over 2 is 2, or 1. And in the third term, there is 3 minus 2 is 2, 2 times 3 is 6, 6 divided by 2 is 3, 1 plus 2 is also 3. Earlier in the video we said that this equation can represent the sequence of the 1, 3, 6, 10, 15. So we're going to use that here, but we're starting two terms over, so we're going to have to plug in an n minus 2. So this goes to n minus 2, this goes to n minus 1, and that goes to just n. Alright, so at this point it's really important to remember that you're going to include multiplying by d and multiplying by s. Because really what we're doing is we're multiplying 3 times 1 plus 3 times 2 plus 3 times 3 times 3 times 4, and we're just finding the sums of the coefficients times this. We have to include these three variables because they will change depending on the particular series. At this point, I'm going to simplify it in two different ways. The first is going to be the ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d form, but I'm also going to simplify it in terms of s, d, and f. n squared minus n over 2, n squared, because we're foiling, minus 2n minus 1n, which is minus 3n, plus 2n over 6, which is going to be the same as n cubed minus 3n squared 2n over 6, all multiplied by s. If you're going to memorize it, I would probably memorize it in this form, because this is slightly easier, but for professionality's sake, I think we should solve it in the other form too. From this point, I'm going to start distributing, so now we're going to have an nf plus dn squared halves s n cubed six minus because three six is one half n squared s halves plus two six is one third n s thirds. At this point I've underlined all of the terms according to the power, all of the n to the first are red, all the n squareds are purple, and all the n cubes are still green. There is only one green, and we'll start with s6 n cubed, s6 n cubed, plus, now we're going to go to the n squares, and here, here, we're going to have a d plus, no, d minus, there's a minus sign here, minus s halves times n squared. We're going to now add together all of the red ones, and I'm going to multiply it by six, 6, that way we can get a common denominator here. And this is just going to be 6n, or 6f. This is going to be minus 3d, and this is going to be plus 2s 
seeing that this is over 3, and all of this is going to be multiplied by n. It's a better view of the final equation. This is mildly complicated, and I don't know if there's an easier way to necessarily do this, but if you're just trying to simply solve, this is maybe a good thing to have on hand. Thanks for watching.